Hey guys, I'm Colin Wright and I'm going to answer some questions from you. First question, how do you deal with difficult times? I am acutely aware of the fact that there are many different types of difficult times. And so I don't think any answer that I could give would apply to absolutely everything. Everybody has different circumstances that, that I couldn't possibly know about and different definitions for what they would consider to be difficult. Some general big picture advice that I can offer though, things that have worked for me at least, is to step back and look at the big picture as often as possible. And what that means in this context is to one, take a look at the difficulty that you're experiencing now and put it in the context of other difficult things that you've experienced in the past. I'm not going to say compare it to other things that other people have dealt with because again, everybody deals with these things in different ways, has different spectrums of difficulty that they've coped with and that they're capable of coping with. So put it in the context of things that you have dealt with in the past. And I think you'll realize in most cases that whatever difficult times you're dealing with now is not new and it's not something that you haven't encountered and overcome before and allow that to fill you with a little bit of, of fighting spirit and allow that to maybe encourage you to, to keep moving forward regardless. The other thing that I would recommend is to, when you're, you're taking that step back and looking at the big picture, look at the very big picture. And, and what I mean by that is think of yourself and your life and your home and your friends and your family and your culture and your continent and your planet all in the context of the larger universe and recognize that you and everybody on this planet and everything that we're doing all day every day these are not things that actually matter typically in the big scheme of things uh, not just typically like at all these are all things that will disappear. Everything is finite. We will all return to dust. And whatever your particular belief system happens to be, looking at just the, the science, the chemicals and the electricity and all of the catalysts and chemical impulses that make up these things that we are and the way that we interact with each other, recognize that most of what we worry about are societal issues, and these are all invisible fake things that we've agreed to work with as if they're real. And recognize that anything that you do, whether it's a success or a failure, is something that will not live forever. It will disappear as soon as you're gone, or as soon as your culture's gone, or as soon as the planet's gone, as soon as the sun explodes. These are not things that are infinite problems. And it, it sounds like a really big downer, I know, but again, putting something that seems like a really big problem in context like this can be an incredibly valuable thing. And sometimes you have to step back further than other times, but in any case, you can step back and step back and step back and eventually find a place where whatever it is that you're dealing with seems manageable by comparison to all of these things that you've dealt with in the past or just manageable in the grand scheme of things because really it doesn't matter quite so much as you think it does and so you can act rationally rather than acting from a place of worry and concern and fear. And the second question today, how do you deal with jealousy? Jealousy is horrible. It's something that's important enough to talk about that I dedicated an entire chapter to it in my book, uh, Some Thoughts About Relationships. It's something that some people I think are born without. I've met some people that just don't seem to have it and I am so jealous of that, haha, <laughs> uh, because I've had to work immensely hard to overcome my sense of jealousy that I had in the past. And jealousy, probably what we're talking about here, I don't know the exact context of this question, but uh, for me, jealousy came out most frequently in relationships. And the thing that really helped me get past that was looking forward into the future and thinking, what type of person do I want to be? Like philosophically, what do I actually believe? And what I actually believed, and this informed the type of person I wanted to be, was that I wanted the person that I cared about, this person that I love, to be happy, regardless of what that happens to mean, and regardless of whether or not I'm the person who can make them happiest. And recognizing that, and then recognizing all of the adjacent ideas that surround that, like the fact that uh, if if my significant other is talking to somebody else who I think is better looking, and should I get jealous? Well, no. Why? You know, thinking about it rationally and taking that thought 
apart, I can recognize that one, if that other person would make her happier, then that's something that I want her to have. Two, uh, I trust her enough and I trust our communication enough that she would tell me if this is something that I need to worry about and then I can mentally prepare myself for whatever comes next. Uh, and three, typically most of the things that we get jealous about, it's not us responding to real things that are happening in real life, it's just our self-consciousness being projected onto other people. And recognizing all of these things allowed me to really wrangle this. It still took time, but it was something that, like, like a lot of different bad habits, like biting my nails when I was a kid, all I had to do was, over the course of several months, catch myself every time I found myself doing it. Every time I found myself biting my nails or every time I found myself getting jealous, I didn't say, oh, it didn't work immediately, I guess I can't do this. I said, okay, I'm doing this now, I'm biting my nails, I'm feeling jealous, let's take this situation apart, figure out what happened, let's try to catch it myself before I do it next time. And, you know, allow yourself, forgive yourself that trespass of this thing that you're trying to accomplish and just catch yourself every single time. And when it comes to jealousy, if you can catch yourself, take apart the situation, recognize that this isn't something that you have to respond to, even if you're feeling it in the moment, you don't have to act upon it, and then move forward from there. And you'll find that slowly but surely, your response to situations where you, you feel like you should be jealous is not to get jealous, but to recognize the moment and to put a little pin in it, and then to reflexively, instead of responding emotionally to it in this like lizard brain way, you respond very rationally and recognize what's happening and say, oh, okay, this is what's happening. It's totally fine. And then you move forward. And that's where I'm at now. It's not that a little pang of jealousy never arises. It's just that I know how to respond to it. And my reflexive way of responding is not emotionally. It's not to lash out or to feel self-conscious. Is just to recognize that this is a moment where I probably would have been jealous at some point in my life. I know that different people have different experiences with this and it takes different amounts of time. Again, some people are much better at getting over it than I am. Other people, no doubt, it will take longer. But recognize that it can be done and it is very much worth your time to do it because jealousy really is just a horrible thing to have in your relationship. It's horrible to have in your relationship, it's horrible to have in your life to be jealous of other people and to judge yourself by them as a yardstick. It doesn't make any sense. And so the quicker that you can change your reflexive response in those moments when you feel that you should be jealous to being rational instead, the better off you'll be on every level. If you have a question you'd like me to answer in a future video, you can leave it in the comment section below. You can also leave it on the Consider This Facebook page, and I collect those periodically, and I, I record videos of me answering them. If you want to find out more about me and my work, you can go to colin.io. You can find my blog at exilelifestyle.com and my podcast at letsknowthings.com. And you can find me elsewhere on the internet, on Instagram and Snapchat, Twitter, Vine, pretty much everywhere, at Colin is my name.